great with time. Appreciate specifics. it. My name is Mike Hintock. I'm the CEO of Net Energy. We're a thermal energy storage company based in Chicago, Illinois. I'm excited to tell you about how we can help solve a huge problem in the commercial energy market. That is that peak electricity for cooling is very expensive. Peak electricity for cooling is often two to six times more expensive during daytime on peak rates than during less expensive off peak nighttime rates. And in addition to this, there is often a demand charge that represents 50% or more of a commercial customer's energy bill. And building cooling is the primary driver for these high energy prices. But currently, there is no great solution to help combat this. So this is our black ice technology. This is a thermal battery that stores cold. Some of you may be familiar with ice storage as a technology, where you freeze water at night when the prices are low, use it during the day when the prices are high. We do something very similar, but we have a patented phase change composite of wax and graphite that has material properties that significantly improve the performance and allow us to integrate and be used in uh, uh, unique ways. Uh, it has, first off, it has an optimal freezing point of about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which significantly significantly increases the efficiency of the air conditioner. And secondly, it has a very high thermal conductivity, 10 times higher than water and ice as a storage medium, so it can fully charge or discharge in less than one hour. And then lastly, it works as a heat exchanger, so you can integrate it with a single speed compressor and an air conditioner, but provide variable speed cooling. So the way we integrate it is if you want to think of a hybrid car where you can take a normal combustion engine, downsize the engine, at an electric motor, an electric battery, and it becomes 50% more efficient. Something similar, you can take a five ton air conditioner, downsize the compressor to say three tons, add our thermal storage solution, and you reduce peak electricity consumption from the compressor by 40%. So overall, it has significantly improved performance. With just a four ton hour thermal storage battery, we're able to provide two kilowatt demand reduction over the peak period. And this is very important, as we were discussing earlier today, is demand charges in the United States are very, flex are, are very favorable. There are 5 million commercial buildings in the United States that are eligible for demand charges of $15 per kilowatt or more. This represents well over 10 million commercial air conditioner replacements in just the United States alone. And utility tariffs are trending towards more and higher demand charges across the country. And not only can the end user benefit, utilities can also benefit from our thermal storage uh, technology. Everything from peak generation deferral to transmission and distribution deferral, demand response, and dynamic control of the grid. So a little bit about our product comparison. If you see there on the left is the minimum standard baseline air conditioner. There's a lot of information here, so we'll focus on the price. That, that price to the customer is about $3,000. In the middle, you see, is the highest efficiency air conditioner available, and that's about $6,000. Our hybrid thermal storage system will come in at about $5,000 while providing the benefits of the variable speed system with the addition of storage and uh, peak electricity consumption reduction. So all this leads to is unit economics is a payback in three to five years without incentives when comparing to a baseline system, which is what you want in this industry. But it also has future eligibility for three types of incentives. Uh, your, your general energy storage incentives, one. Number two, specific thermal energy storage incentives. And number three, air conditioner efficiency incentives. So this can all lead to immediate payback and help drive initial adoption. And the further optimization will reduce payback to below three years. So overall, to any investors here, this is a very attractive market, $8 billion commercial air conditioning market in the United States. And globally, this is a $30 billion market beyond the United States. It's very fragmented, where no OEM has more than 13% of the market, and they're looking for, differentiated, for different technologies to differentiate them. And a 1% market share leads to just $500 million of enterprise value. So our go-to-market strategy is we are working with the two Fortune 500 HVAC manufacturers to help commercialize and develop our technology. We are also partnered with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado. We are testing and developing our technology. And we are going to establish the initial go-to-market strategy with them. Our initial customer will be commercial buildings in the United States, with our growth customer is residential buildings and international commercial buildings. We have a great team and partners. My business partner successfully launched a lithium-ion battery company over a decade ago. And we have great partners like EPRI, Wells Fargo, um, University of Chicago, and others. So in terms of funding, we have received $1.2 million in funds. Almost all of that is grant, non-dilutive grant funding with a few competition windings. And we're raising a $2.5 million seed round, of which $1.5 million has been committed, which is perfect for the $1 million virtual prize. Top it off. All right. All right. So uh, that, that concludes our presentation.
description, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Super. Thank you. Okay, good question at the top here. Do you have a solution to determine optimal charging times depending on local energy rates? Is there like a software or do you rely on building energy management? Yeah, yeah, we're developing that in conjunction with NREL. You know, the load profiles and the cooling needs are very different in Southern California versus New York State versus international. So that's just something that is managed within the controls of the air conditioner. Uh, what's what's kind of unique about our system is it can be more uh, uh, encapsulated in the air conditioner without relying on the building management system where you have to take in uh, take into account all of the components it's more of just the air conditioner can provide that steady state peak demand reduction okay and there's a few comments or questions in here about competition you describe yourself relative to the kind of established uh, air conditioning systems how about other um, thermal energy storage and that kind of thing that, that are in the more startup phase. How do you, what's the key differentiator there? Well, the key, def the key differentiator is our material, the phase change composite material that has a very high thermal conductivity. So we're not trying to build, to put it back to the hybrid car analogy, we're building a hybrid car with a very small battery that reduces the, uh, reduces the cost of our system rather than trying to build a fully electric vehicle with a very large battery. And in terms of cost and weight and size and placement, this allows it to be integrated with those smaller rooftop air conditioner systems and uh, residential units that you don't see with other storage mediums. Okay. Next question. Can you describe how this could be either retrofit or is it coming new with an integrated smaller system, the, the way you dis displayed the economics early on? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, our path to market is to build this at the factory with our OEM partners, so like a hybrid car, it will be integrated at the factory rather than trying to retrofit an existing vehicle to create a hybrid car or retrofit fitting existing air conditioners. Technically, it can be done, but from a go-to-market strategy, we don't view that as the best option. Okay. Um, what are the durability impacts of the modified duty cycle on the base air conditioning unit, and what is the lifespan of core? So how do those yeah, relate to each other? Great questions. So yeah. the duty cycle should be improved because the air conditioner compressor will cycle less. It will turn on and off less, and that's when you have most of the mechanical wear and tear on the system. And in terms of the phase change composite material, unlike chemical, uh, electrochemical batteries, it doesn't have a, a degradation over time because there isn't a chemical reaction. It's merely just a phase change. Okay. Uh, all right, 20 seconds. Um, have you looked at um, applying these benefits to battery cooling? Uh, for example, charging the charge the cooling when charging the battery and then take advantage of lower parasitics during discharge. Have you looked at, is there any relationship there that you've explored? There, there, there's, there's ways that they can be integrated and complement each okay. other. Okay. Well, there you go. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thank